Bro, please save me a spot, bro. Like, come on, I, I can contribute. Yeah, eat a dick. Once there was a baby who was born. Then all these random folks start chanting his name, begging him for power the same way water boys beg for you to buy warm bottles of water. He gave them the power they asked for, and it was then where they deemed him Big Bro. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to Munchin is crazy. Picking up where we left off from the last part of Thousand Year Blood War, we check in on Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated, and Yuwa is giving the speech, and he introduces the new successor, the one man who will take his place very soon, a man who can lead the Quincy's into great prosperity long after Yuwa is gone, and his name is... Now the Stern Raiders were having an argument about this and then Hoshwalk walked in and they started cooking his ass, calling him a beta for not protesting you all's decision, but Hoshwalk was like, his majesty's decision is final. Damn, I didn't know that nigga was your daddy, shit. Udiu was chopping it up with Utah, but like, what? I don't understand, what, what, what did he gain from this? He, he has friends, a pretty decent life, so he just decided to be an asshole and join the ops? Anyway, everything is going along pretty fine. Ichigo is still training in his rehab, Rukia and his bum, Still rehabbing. Chad and Orihime are still in Waco Mundo. Shunsui paid a visit to the world of the living and gave Ichigo's friends tickets to see him live in concert. You know, <laughs> I don't know, man. Everything seems to finally be returning to normal after a traumatic attack. Men, we have arrived in the Seirete once again. Come forth, Uriya and Hashwa. It's time to commit more war crimes. And well, they got straight to it, man. This is the kind of beef I really like. No planning, no word exchanges, just pure on-site, on-demand violence. Oswald immediately walked up on Sun Tzu in the now, and Eisen variant number three walked up on the research department. But y'all should already know, man. The Quincy's ain't with that fighting shit. They bombing folks because Big Bro told them to speed run the downfall. Gerald from Sid the Science Kid ran up on Toshiro and was trying to turn him into a rotisserie chicken, so he asked Rangiku to help him out, and she was like, Oh my god, you want my help? Just shut up and fight. My god. Meanwhile, Bro was trying to get his sister to go high, but he got pulled up on by BG9. What the fuck kind of name is that? And he started turning him into a pincushion because he didn't really know where Soifon was, right? But then immediately after almost making a kebab out of a child, he pulled out a machine gun. Like, what? What was this nigga's intentions? Anyway, though, Soifon pulled up. Up and took them. Oswald kept trying to get to Sun Sweet, but Nanao put up a fire wall and blocked him every time. And then Eisen the third got pulled up on by Mayuri, and he took a good look at him and he was like, You know what? I don't get paid enough for this. Y'all got it. I I'm not gonna lie to y'all. You ha might owe the Soul Reapers an apology because it seems he wasn't really familiar with their game. What the fuck? Never mind, they're still fucking trash. That man Toshi, bro, was running for his life, bruh. Nah, I have never seen this in all of my days. I know he is the antithesis of ice, but to run from smoke and still get dropped is insanity. Then the Stern Ritter who actually stole Toshiro's Bankai showed up and said, let me have this one. Dropped Rangiku next to him and said, I am Stern Ritter, I, and I believe this is your lieutenant. And this is your Bon Kai, so I am going to kill you both with it, because that is just how I operate. Anyway, Kisuke called Mayuri and said he found a way to get everybody's Bon Kai back. And Mayuri was low-key mad because he didn't think of it first, so he hung up on this nigga. Yeah, but Kisuke was already there. Anyway, he figured out that the resurrection of the Aran cars worked similar to a Bon Kai of a Soul Reaper. However, the Quincy's never stole that shit because it's like poison to them, so he gave them a pill that would hollify their powers enough to take their Bankais back. Toshiro took his back and started shit talking too. Like, I'm not gonna lie, bro, he might be a front runner because just five minutes ago he was doing the digital dash. But yeah, anyway, Blake Griffin number nine was over here talking to Soy Phone crazy, but then he lost his Wi Fi connection and then she released her Bankai, just a nigga with a rocket launcher. Yeah. What is going on? I cannot complete the about this. Since your little analysis is incomplete, how about I send it back to you so you can finish? Kong Kang Du was King Kong King. I don't know this nigga, man. He was trying to do everything to beat Toshiro, but what he didn't know is there's three things you should never do tug on Superman's cape, 
piss in the wind and say Bankai's don't have their own souls because that really triggers them and then bad things can happen when that happens. All right, it's like I was saying, man, Utah really owes them an apology because he was not familiar with their game at all. Shinji was using friendly fire and then trolling the old girl right here, man. Damn, it's finally some order being restored. Oh no, sir, Bruce. I expected you to figure out how to regain Bankai, but now I have allowed the Stern Ritter to get Quince all stuck. Okay, okay, that was a cool little transformation, but you still she was throwing so much shit up. Scooby Doo had to come back and whoop her ass, bro. He was so eager to kill her specifically that he offered up his part just to spin back. Like this is what I'm talking about, bro. This is unprecedented levels of smoke. This man gave up a vital organ just to fight. Like, that's what I'm talking about, bro. That's why I think Transformers 3 is the greatest movie of all time. What do you think? What an interesting point of view. I must say I agree. It does contain components of everything one could want in a movie. Storyline, action, music, attractive women, fast cars. So yes, I think you're correct. A very interesting dialogue we just had. Well, I need to attend to my boss. Toodles. Meanwhile, the Three Stooges is getting their ass beat by Hulk Mysterio or, or Ray Hogan. I don't know. He, he's not even using any energy or whatever. Like, like, he's just beating their ass. He's just hitting them with wrestling moves. Like, come on. Like, didn't they train for, like, hundreds of years just to get dropped from a clothesline from hell? What the fuck? Then these two captains pulled up, you know, the replacements, as I like to call them. But my boy Hulk Mysterio was stat padding against lesser competition. He, he finally ran into some real niggas right here and got his shit folded. But of course, it's not that simple, you know? His number one cock muncher told him to lock in, and, and he did, and Cook Bro right here. I'm not gonna give him no credit for this, because these two are some randizies. These are like the worst fucking captains in the in the Go Take 13, ain't they? This like beating up on Marcus Morris and PJ Tucker, or, or fucking Kenny Pickett and Daniel Jones. Like, these niggas suck. But just when you thought hope was lost, everybody's favorite bum, Renji Abadai pulled up looking clean as hell. But we already know where this is about to go, so let's go ahead and skip past it. Oh, oh, oh shit, he survived. Wait, whoa, 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 oh, he, he's beating his ass. Oh, oh shit, oh, okay. Uh, my man still got a negative record though, so ha. Huh. Anyway, so after a long, undisclosed amount of time being locked up in the hyperbolic time chamber, Ichigo is finally allowed to leave the Squad Zero barracks and join the fight. But, but now he's got to pass through 70-something barriers. So he's like pretty much stuck in traffic, basically, trying to get home. Anyway, while that was going on, Hotswall killed the two Stern Raider who got clapped because you all needed their power. Uduyu tried to be like, no. This is not the way, Hush. Shut the fuck up, little nigga. Anyway, Rukia was running around looking for smoke, and she got ran up on by Ass Note. And he was talking shit. He was like, "Where is your brother? If I kill you, do you think he? he you think he'll come out to play?" So he tried to use that fear bullshit, but you know, Rukia ain't never scared of smoke. So then he started trying to have an ideology off. But then she was like, "That fear shit only works on people who are living, and right now, I'm not living." Put that on something or it's Cap. I assure you it's not Cap. In fact, I am dead ass. <laughs> but that didn't work. He activated his takeover badge and had her in a torture act. Like, like, it was looking bad because she was screaming when Biakia pulled up on him though. Then Asano started tweaking. But you know what? The one thing I've noticed in anime as a whole is that whenever like the weird quiet character gets to tweaking out, some shit is about to go down. But he was taunting Biakia about not being able to use his Bankai and but Biakia was like, I don't know who told you this is my Bankai because that's this this is not it this is my shika dog and then he took one look at rick owens looked at his sister and told her do his ass and then she turned the whole block into the <laughs> meanwhile bro right here was bullying yachiru and isane so zaraki showed up and bro was trying to have some fun with this fight but he didn't realize that this fighting shit is it's, it's not a game to kenpachi like he really do this shit he was running through every single attack Grimmy threw like Marshawn Lynch. Like he was really perplexed about this shit. But at the same time, even though nobody could step to you from where you from, that don't apply to everywhere else. So he said, you know what? Fuck the central theme of this show being swords and ghosts. And he pulled out like 70 AKs and let them shits go. But Kenpachi ate those so easily. And now they just taking turns throwing haymakers. But this is the very last person you want to go attack for attack with. Because look, then he decided he wanted to be a part of the Naruto universe, cloned himself, and, and imagine a player planetary devastation and Kenpachi cut that bitch clean in half. He was getting cooked so hard that the depression music started playing mid-fight and he, he tried to imagine being stronger than Kenpachi but like 
that shit didn't work. Because his body couldn't take all that shit. Pause. So he essentially offed himself trying to go band for band with a real demon. But after that, the girlies pulled up on Kimpachi and started jumping him and his squad. They fucking turned his ass into a well done steak. Yes, sir. They done freed my dog. It is time. Lightning woman tried to walk up on him, but he said, how rude of me. I haven't formally introduced you to that building over there. He's really into you. He sent the other three flying, and they just kept sending shots, but he was blocking every single one. Then they acted their ball starting deep, and he was just like, no. Just effortlessly avoiding these attacks, man. Come on. Then electricity woman came back and threw some crazy shit at him, so he just used get to the keep God in your life, and she was like, what the fuck? What are you blind dodge? Somehow they survived that and got up and was ready for round 15, but then all the other Stern Ritters showed up trying to box and get the W on their record. Like, like, I can't lie to you, this is a bad look. One man got y'all all this press? Like, come on, where? what happened? Then Utah and Uriu pulled up on him, like, like, where is everybody else? Anyway, Ichigo tried to go after you all, but they tried to sneak his ass, but then Renji showed up and was like, Get going, I'll take it from here. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that shit, man. Anyway, as Ichigo was chasing after Yuha, Uriu tried to get him to stop, and Ichigo was like, wait, what the fuck? Hold on, did I, did I skip a season? Why, why is he there? Uh, Uriu wasn't interested in conversing with this nigga for some reason, and they dipped off to the Soul King's palace. Now the squad was just sitting down trying to make sense of the events, and Ichigo was on his Naruto shit talking about, I'm gonna bring Uriu back to the village hidden in Katakura town. Even if I have to beat his ass, I'll drag him back. It doesn't matter, because that's my ninja. My ninja way. Well... What if he has valid points? Oh, then we just gonna beat his ass, fuck. Who do you? I can't believe you. So you guys really hate him too? Huh. Well, let's team up and beat him together. No way I'm teaming up with Gerald from Sid the Science Kid. My name is not Gerald! Fuck! Hey, hey, easy. Why would you guys try to fight an unarmed teenage girl? Uh, you know how messed up that sounds, right? Uh, we can see your print. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but, uh... You're a guy, aren't you? So Giselle really didn't appreciate getting misgendered, so she called an airstrike. Anyways, while Kaku and Yumachika are fighting, they peeped that this girl is making zombies. But then Mayuri pulled up on him and then went on his trademark I am smarter than thou rant. And then she sent the zombie after him, but then he said wrong game and started playing Pokemon. Caught her attacks and threw him right back at her. I've actually never seen bro box for like sword, hand to hand, nothing. He's always doing some crazy shit. I mean, it's cool, I guess. So as a response, she pulled out with mad zombies and he pulled out some Iran cars that was standing outside of Soul Depot just trying to find some work. Hold on, bro. I know that ain't that ugly ass nigga right there. What was your name, cuz? Hey, bro, hold on. What did you just say? Anyway, so the Iran cars went after the zombies and Yumichika was like, hold up, bro. These are our squad members. Chill. But then Mayuri was like, <laughs> yo. What's that smell? What are you talking about? It smells like bitch. Look, man, what? Well, anyway, after the Iran cars cooked the zombie, she summoned Zombie Toshiro. Then he ran up on Ikaku and Yumichika and cooked their shit. Like, like, I don't even think actual Toshiro has ever fought this hard. He was one tapping folks. So Mayuri couldn't freeload no more. So he said, All right, Toshiro, that's where I'm gonna have to stop. You. The Fitness Grand Pacer Test is a multi stage aerobic capacity. Yeah, so apparently Genjutsu works in this anime too. Then he started going on and on about his new strain of medicine being so strong that it sends people back into the past. Then he gave him some of the super soldier serum. Byakuya was beating the shit out of these randoms. They was coming up with all these complex attacks and he was like, Bon Kai, smell the roses, motherfucker. And out of nowhere, TD Jakes pulled up and started controlling Dark Ichigo. And bro was trying to have an ideology off about love, but Byakuya was like, Shut the hell up, bro. Fuck love. I'm still tripping over the emo goth girl from 2019. She really told me I was the one for her. And I believe it. But right as he was about to get clapped for the second time in under 20 episodes, Mayuri's test subjects came in clutch. Then he explained the zombie girl's whole plan and how she was pretty much using Wi-Fi to connect to the bodies of the zombies and control them. So he essentially booted her offline. But then this dude came out again and was trying to spread peace and positivity with Mayuri was like, You just don't seem to get it. These are my zombies. And the only thing they understand is throwing hands. That boy getting his ass wet. That boy getting his ass Meanwhile, back on the home front, Ganju tried to do his best J.R. Smith impression. He was like, bro, please save me a spot, bro. Like, come on, I, I can contribute. Yeah, eat a dick. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. He went. Anyway, Shutada and Two Tongues was having a battle of who could come up with the craziest, most unbelievable power ever, and she won very easily. Then she called this Megazord looking thing, but Yuha said, do her shit. 
but again, everyone has seemed to have forgotten what anime they're in because she called a genjutsu. Like, what is going on? But my man's right here did not care. He just kept shooting, but then all of Squad Zero popped out. Thor pulled up on Nimaya, but Nimaya no diffed him. Like, look at how effortlessly this man was cooking, bruh. This is what happens when you let a brother on the squad, man. These white men was no match. Then Yuha avoided the prison and ran up on Ichibe. After that, Nimaya was like, Yo, so which one of you little jive turkeys wants to get dropped today? Anyway, Yuha kept calling Ichibe by his whole government, so Ichibe gave him ZAHANDO! And then he pulled up again while he was still suffering from the attack and did the too little celebration, but like, like he literally did it, you know? Meanwhile, the rest of Squad Zero was jumping Hashwalt and Uryu, but the dude Nimaya was fighting just tried to give him AIDS for some reason, so after he slept Hashwalt, Tenjiro ran up and gave him some new blood, and then my man's got cooked. But meanwhile, Yuha was trying his best to fight against the power of literature. A-R-M-S spells arms. Take M-S away, and it's just R. Now that man paralyzed. What the fuck is going on, bro? Like, what kind of power is that? Like, imagine that being in the real world, bro. Like, imagine your girl catches you cheating and she just paints over your shit and now you just got half a dick. But anyway, this man you are is paralyzed, right? Okay, well, maybe he wasn't paralyzed, but he was definitely looking like me when I try to lift heavy shit at the gym. He couldn't swing that sword for nothing. So Ichibe painted his ass. Nah, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Oh shit, oh fuck, my bad y'all. Hey yo. <laughs> but anyway, then Yuha was like, You may have the power of literature on your side, but that doesn't matter because I wrote this whole fucking show. Ass pull! This man dead gave himself a power up at the expense of his squad. Well, what are we till you chop liver? Yes. So essentially, he traded away all his bench players for cap space so he could give more money or power or ratio to the Royal Guard and start and vibe, you know what I'm saying? We are the infamous Squad Zero! Did you really think that we'd let you come into our realm and defeat us? It's time to show you who we are. I can't fucking compete! I just can't fucking compete! Can you get the fuck out of my- A few moments later. You think you won? <laughs> We just getting started, yo. Don't worry, guys. I got a plan. Send Jamaro. Save us. Okay. Domain expanse. Oh, shit, my fault. Bon Kai. Unravel one, Hank. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the deadest of them all? Unravel two Hanks. Get your weight up. Unravel three Hanks. Shout out Gara. Unravel four Hanks. Thor 4, Love and Thunder, was underwhelming, to say the least. Succumb to retirement and never cook again. Unravel 5 Hanks. I got Za for the love. Unravel 6 Hanks. I don't have any more rhymes or puns in the back. Get fucked. Anyway, back to U-Haul and DJ Khaled. That boy Ichibe coming out with new fonts and shit. And then he stepped on him and clapped his ass. Anyway, they, they've been pulling out bullshit for the past four or five episodes, right? Like, like I know he ain't gonna go out like this. U-Haul gotta have some shit for him, right? R right? Oh my god! Well, it would seem that Attack on Titan cliffhangers cannot be destroyed. They can only change form. <laughs> Oh,